In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you how to move a title behind an irregular object. This comes as a request from some of my subscribers who saw a recent tutorial where we were showing you how to move a title as though it was revealed by an object, but here we're going to move it behind one. If I play the clip on the screen, you'll see a man standing and raising his arms and watch the title. It comes from the right, it goes behind him, off to the left. How can you do that or something like that in CyberLink PowerDirector? Now there's a hint I have about using this technique. When you use it, you must make sure that the object that you're putting it behind is relatively stable. The more stable the object, the better the results. So let's get to it. I just imported the file called The Man, and what I'm going to do is take that video and drag it down into track number one. We'll lengthen it so we can see it in more detail. And this is the unedited video, not the one that you just saw, but it's the same guy standing there and holding his hands up. And so we'll just move our time indicator so you can see the middle of the video. What we want to do is put a title behind the man himself. So in order to do that, we're going to take our title, click on the T on the left side, and let me take uh, any title I want. I'll do the My Title, and I'll drag it down to track number two. Now I have to decide where I want to have my title begin. That's very important because I want the man to be relatively stable when I start to bring my title in. So I, I'll move it to maybe this place here, and then I'm going to right click on the white triangle and set a timeline marker. I'll click on Add Timeline Marker. I can give it a title if I want. I don't need to. I'll just click on OK. Now I have a marker, and I'm going to use my title to go from the marker all the way to the end of the clip. I give myself some more real estate down here. I'll see where my clip ends. And we'll simply shorten the title to be the same length as that of my clip. And it'll snap to really nice. So now my title is going to show up only from the time he raises his hands until the end of the clip. Because he's relatively stable there. What I want to do now is edit the title. I'll double click on it. And we're going to change a couple things about it. I'll drag across to all the letters. I'm going to change the font face family to impact. And then I will change the size. I don't like the preset sizes, so I'll just type in my own. I'll type in 60. And then I'm going to make it, instead of white, let's make it black. I'll click that from my color palette. Click on OK in the color selector. I'm going to turn on a border. And instead of a blue border, we'll pick a white border. Something pretty simple. And now I have my title. I'm going to have it move from the right side to the left side. So I simply move my playhead, my time indicator, to the very left side. And I'm going to move my title grab any one of the sides, drag it, and it's off to the right. Now I'm going to keyframe the title. To do that, I click on the arrow next to the title, and then on the position value, I'm going to set a keyframe by clicking on the white diamond. It will turn yellow when I hover over it, and it will set a little red keyframe. Then I move to the very end of my title track, and I'm going to take the title and drag it, and my little pink line indicates that it's level there. Move it to the left side. And so if I play this, I'll see the title come across the screen from right to left, only it's in front of the man. How do I put it behind the man? We'll save what we've done so far. I'll click on OK and go back into my media room by clicking on the top icon on the left side. What I want to do is add another track. And so if I'm going to add that other track, 
it's going to have to be track number three. So I'll take the same movie, drag it down, start and stop at the same time in my project, and now I have it on track three. Now if I play it the way it is, track three will override track two and track one. I won't have any benefit from it. But here's where I want to do some masking on track number three. So I'm going to take and click on my time indicator and my time marker and I'm going to highlight the bottom track and do control P that will create a image of the frame that's right there. I'll give it a name. Let's call it Guy. That's all I need. G-U-Y. And it will immediately create and drop a picture into the media room that's just the frame, a still shot of that frame. So we're going to make a mask out of that. To do that, you need a photo editing program. Uh, you can use the one that Cyberlink provides. I'm going to use a different one because that's what I'm most familiar with. So I'll right click and I'll choose Open File Location. So that will take me to the place where that picture is. Here's my picture called Guy. I'll right click on it and then I'll choose the option I have here to open with. And here I'm going to choose something that's slightly off the recording screen. I'll use Photoshop Elements. You can use whatever photo editor you like. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to highlight the man. And I'm here I'm using the lasso tool. And what I want to do is take the man and turn it into a black silhouette. I'll pause while I finish that. And now that I have the man highlighted, I'm going to click the Edit option here and simply do Cut. And now I have the silhouette. Then what I'd like to do is I'm going to fill this area with black. So I'll take my paint can, make sure my color is set to black, and then I'll dump it in. Now I have a few thing areas where it's not perfect here. Normally I would clean that up, but I'm not going to worry about it since this is not a, an exercise in using Photoshop Elements. So I'm going to save that. I'll do a save as. I'll simply call it Guy2. Click on OK. And then I'll close my photo editing program. Now what I want to do is get back to Power Director, and I'm going to take the third clip, the bottom one, click on Designer, and then from the drop-down choose Mask Designer. And now we're going to create a mask. We don't have one that we need, so we're going to click on the button that says Create an Image Mask. Click on that. I'm going to choose my Guy 2. And that creates an image mask identical to that particular frame. And so one thing I need to do besides that is to invert it. So I'll click on the box to the left of the invert mask in the lower left and click on OK. And now I have a mask on this whole clip that's the shape of the man. And so when I play it, watch what happens. It looks pretty good. Now, there are cases where this may not give you the stability you like because he's moving slightly. Now, the problem with what I'm about to do is it freezes everything, including the motion of the clouds, but they're not moving much at all, so it doesn't matter a lot here. What I want to do is make sure that it's completely stable while he's raising his hands. So I'm going to do something else. I'm going to click on my timeline marker. Highlight the first clip, do Control T to cut it, and we're going to slide to the right. And I will slide just the length of the actual clip. I'll move back to the timeline marker, and on track three, I'll repeat the process, Control T, and slide to the right. Now I'm going to actually take the image of the man, drag it down, and put it between the two tracks. I'll put click on Trim to Fit. 
and I'll drag it down to the other one. And I'll do trim to fit. Now what we're going to have in this case is we're going to have to use our same masking tool not on the video but on the still image. So I click on the bottom one, do designer, mask designer again, choose my man, invert the mask, and click on OK. And now what will happen will be that while the title is on the screen, the man will be frozen because we just have the photo of that single frame in the video. But if you do it short for a short enough period, it doesn't look very bad at all. So if I play this now, and then he moves again. Let me make it a little bigger. We'll play it one more time. And the man comes into frame. You see him stand there and raise his hands. And now the mask is perfectly the same size as he is. And then he resumes motion. So that's a bit of a way to get a little more stability if your subject that you want to go behind is slightly in motion. We hope you found this helpful as you grow in your skills as a video editor.